five. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, we should, I uh, should be live, but for some reason, YouTube is effing up. <laughs> YouTube? And, yeah, my YouTube, because I have put um, on some music from there. Technical difficulties! <laughs> <laughs> well, I see there? you are live. Yay! I'm glad to see that. Mm, I should probably go directly to your channel. So when you're hosting, can does that mean that you get to see what's going on my chat as well? Um... <laughs> honestly, I don't, I don't think so. But... Yeah. If someone were to come to my channel and start watching, if they click, click follow, mm -hmm. they they get those follows and those views. You get those views. So. Oh, nice, nice, nice. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Love to hear that. Yeah, it's a pretty useful feature that I haven't seen a lot of people make use of yet. Mm -hmm. But I think it's I definitely think helped should. the smaller channels. Um. I don't know, I think it'll, it'll help a lot of a lot of channels, to be honest with you. Yeah, especially people who can't do stuff often. Mm. It's like, oh, uh, I can't stream right now, but go look at my friend. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's cool. Mm -hmm. It works. Daffox, how's it going? <laughs> Welcome to Tea Time with Mo. I'm my special, amazing, awesome guest, Genesis. Hello! I'm drinking tea, as you can tell. Hence the name, Tea Time with Mo. <laughs> and I am drinking some OJ for the time being. Ooh. I'm actually drinking um, cardamom chai, my favorite. I've mm. never had it. You've never had actually, it? Mm -mm. Although it's chai, so I probably won't like it. <laughs> but I do like cardamom and other things like lassis. Mm, okay. Hey, Debsy doll. Debsy doll. And Curry Bell. Curry. Hey, how you doing? How you guys doing today? I hope you all doing well. I completely failed that, didn't I? Yeah, I completely failed that. There you go. That's better. <laughs> So basically, what tea time with Mo is, is just so we just chill, we drink tea, or other things, beverages, I'm not too fussed what the other person drinks, I'm most likely going to be drinking tea all the time, but we just chill, we just chat, you know, you get to know a little bit more about Genesis. Hey Bo Jerry, how's it going? I haven't seen you in ages. Ah. So how are you, Jen? I'm very hungry. <laughs> um, you can tell what you're eating. Um, I'm eating a big fat omelet. Ooh. I'd show it to you, but it looks gross. <laughs> it's really good though. Uh huh. What do you have? What do you put on your omelets? Um, well, I like to make use of my leftovers as much as mm. I can. So I had some leftover uh, Italian sausage from some spaghetti I made. Um, some leftover beans from something and spinach so mm -hmm. I took four eggs beat them up seasoned them and <laughs> just threw everything inside of the omelet one and it's a wreck I, 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 have, I have to make fun of you for one thing you just said eggs. what did I just say? <laughs> what? It, what? eggs oh don't make fun of me for saying eggs that's how I say it okay and I'm not alone right Dead Sea? I me made fun of her yesterday as well for saying eggs that's how we say it. How do you say it? Eggs? Oh. <laughs> okay. Fine. I'm sure everyone here believes the British way to say it is the right way, right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> eggs. <laughs> Just saying, guys. Eggs. <laughs> I've never really been too, too fussed. I mean, I've never really liked to eat eggs. Like, at all. Um... I mean, I have it in like, like you know, if it's like masked in something, like in, um, say, cake or something like that, it's baked, so, you know. But I don't like eating eggs, like, you know, 
scrambled eggs or omelettes or the other types of eggs. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I love eggs mm -hmm. for the same reason I love chicken. But hey, it is chicken. But anyway, hey, yeah. I love eggs because it's versatile. You can make it in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. And it'll taste a little bit different depending on how you make it. Mm -hmm. You boil it, it tastes one way. You, uh, what's the word? Poach it, it tastes another way. And hey, yeah. Um, <laughs> you uh, bake it and it tastes a completely different way. So I just love that you can take one simple ingredient and mm. get multiple different dishes. What mm -hmm. is it about it? that you don't like? I don't know. I feel like it's it's both the taste and the texture. Mm. I don't know what it is. I like as soon as I put it in my mouth. Also the smell. <laughs> the smell? The smell. Like, I don't know. It's like, it kind of is, it, I don't know. It doesn't, I, I, I just don't like it. It's just, a, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't mind cooking it. I, I wouldn't mind cooking it, you know, for someone like a breakfast in bed kind of thing. Mm. But I, I personally don't eat it myself, you know. And eat, a lot of people have said, "Oh, you have to try my omelet. Oh, you have to try my eggs. My eggs. You love my eggs." Nah, no, no thanks. No thanks. Uh, That's such a shame. But it's okay. <laughs> it's eggs is eggs, you know. <laughs> Everyone has their own taste. Mhm. Mm eggs. Just saying. Eggs. <laughs> So, introduce yourself to everyone if the people don't know who you are. Well, for those of you who may not know me, <laughs> I'm Genesis. Um, I am part of a streaming group with our lovely Mokaji of the Power Panetteers. And, um, uh, let's see what else. Hmm. Hmm. I, um, obviously I'm a gamer. I love to game. Um, I've been playing since I was about two and a half, maybe three. Um, I have a picture dated April 1990. What? And I'm playing one of those old school Tiger handhelds. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So wow. that's the earliest known evidence of me mm. playing video games. And yes, those counted back in the day. <laughs> that was the first I guess, portable yeah. version. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that was mobile gaming before mobile gaming. <laughs> um... But is, yeah, is that the is that the one with like the thousand and in one kind of thing? Like no, I think like... the one I had had like maybe three games. Oh, um, okay. And I really couldn't remember the type of games that were on there, but <laughs> they were fun. They held my attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when um, I, when I was younger, when it, during most time we uh, well there was like um, you'd have a like at the end of your exam, mm -hmm. and you'd get a prize. It's like a you know you'd you'd always get a prize. We got this like handheld gaming device and he said mm -hmm. a thousand and one games so we were all excited we were like yes we get to play you know and then when you look at it it's actually five different games but a thousand different ways to play it <laughs> like difficulty is going to be a little harder this time well you know it's oh it was diabolical but I can't believe people actually bought those mm -hmm. <laughs> but I guess it's, it's one of those things, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so what, what major console would you say that actually started you off into, like, hardcore gaming, you know? Would you... Um, I would have to say the Sega Genesis, hence my name. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Um, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, wearing, I'm wearing a Mega Drive top right now. I know, and you get brownie points for that. <laughs> um, I don't have any Sega paraphernalia or gear or whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. so I have to make sure that changes mm -hmm. soon definitely um, <laughs> but yeah I uh, it was definitely the Sega Genesis we may have had the SNES before that but um, at one point we hit a, a dark spot in my family's financial history mm -hmm. and we had to get rid of it um, to bring some extra money in but things got better eventually and we had the Sega Genesis um, and I was older then so I could actually read what was happening on the screen rather than just hopping around on Goombas and dying <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah the SNES would make a return to our lives later um, right, I was right. very fond of uh, Donkey Kong Country 2 which has uh, Diddy Kong and Dixie 
That was my favorite game on the SNES. Probably, hands down, forever. <laughs> wow. But um, back to the Genesis, um, I played a lot of Sonic. Um, I loved Sonic. Jam and Earl. I have a, a little sister, so I had to oh, share yeah. a lot with her. Mm -hmm. Which is unfortunate because I was very competitive and she wasn't and she wanted me to go easy on her and I was just like, <laughs> not about that life. Because <laughs> I wanted to be able to play with my uncles when they mm -hmm. came and if I was playing against someone who wanted me to go easy, I wasn't going to be having fun or challenging myself. So, yeah, yeah um, Toja Mineral, which I played on my stream recently, um, lots of Sonics, I had the... the, the um, Sonic and Knuckles version that mm -hmm. had the flip top where you could put the other old ones in. I didn't oh, like the right, first. Okay. Yeah, I didn't like the first uh, Sonic that much because it it was just missing something without Tails. Um, mm. But my favorite Sonic game is probably wait, was that two or three? <laughs> <laughs> they start to blend together, but I think it's the yeah, third one. Is. It's the third one where oh, okay. um, you're. You can fly with tails individually, and it's a lot of fun. Wow. Okay. Well, yeah. I actually, um, I think my my favorite was the uh, first Sonic. Actually, mm. the reason being, um, that was the first one I played. That's why. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. It, it kind of got a broader love of gaming to me. You know. I guess mm -hmm. I've always been a gamer. Although there was like a dark period in my life mm -hmm. where I didn't, you know, I didn't. Well, play anything you know mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't want to play anything it was between PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 to be honest with you and oh. yeah but like the Sonic games have always been like what bring me back to gaming you know it's like the Sonic games were really really good mm -hmm. like especially the first two three you know I, I loved obviously I didn't have the money for it so mm -hmm. I couldn't buy all the rest but I did love Sonic 1 and 2 Mm -hmm. They were like my favorite, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah. yeah, I mean, like I, I did love the 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 tails part, and then you can play two players with it and stuff like that. So that was always, you know, always nice. I never played the knuckles one though. Everyone said the knuckles one was really good as well. Yeah, I would have oh. to agree with that. It's much more challenging too, for some, mm. in some cases. I don't think I ever finished the one with knuckles actually. Um, mm. which is something I should probably go back and do one of these days. I swear old games are much harder. Old games are way harder. Oh my yes. goodness. You get your lives taken away, you start mm -hmm. from the beginning. Yep. There's no save feature back then. <laughs> you know? I remember playing yeah. Altered Beast with my brother one time. Uh, that game is such a troll, seriously. Um, but we got so far and yeah we lost all our lives and we started we had to start again never play that game ever again until when it came out for PlayStation 3 HD and I was like nah nah the, the, like I, I don't even want to attempt starting that game again <laughs> mm -hmm. but yeah back in the day the, those games were really 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 hard you know these, these kids are have it easy I think <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and it's funny because I think some people are so used to their hands being held, like, this is how you jump, press this button. Um, <laughs> there's this sense that they kind of lost that discovery kind of thing that old games force you to have, because mm -hmm. there were no on-screen tutorials, which sometimes was a flaw in the game, but oftentimes it was just so easy, you could just pick it up and go. Exactly. That was only, what, two, two three buttons on the controller back then? Yeah, there uh, were three unless you had the turbo controller where it had six. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't about that life. I know <laughs> I had three about, uh, on, my, on my controllers. But I think what started it for me was, um, back in the day, long, long time ago, my father had this game that he wouldn't... He never put on, like, the, only like when you asked, he would actually put it on. And it was just Pong. It had oh. all different modes, like, you know, there was a tennis mode, and there was, like, football mode, but all the games were just Pong. Basically. <laughs> all, all the games were Pong. Mm -hmm. But yeah, then after that, you know, you got, you got in, I got into, like, the Sega side of things. Never had a, uh, never had a uh, Super Nintendo, never had any, you know, Nintendo things, except for when I went to Mecca and I actually got myself a Game Boy Color. 
Mm. Plus Game Boy Color. I only had one game for it, but that game had over a hundred games on it. But you, the only downfall to that, mm -hmm. you couldn't save. Oh no! <laughs> you couldn't save, and so I was playing Pokemon, and yeah, if your if your batteries, if your batteries died, that's it. That's that's the end of the road. Never finished it until I got the emulator and played it on my PC. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I know how that feels. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Yeah, Altered Beast was a really hard one. I didn't play it that was, until in Sega Dream uh, Dreamcast. Um. He had like a smash pack, as they like to call it, and it was all mm. their old school games on a disc. And that was one of the hardest ones on there. Definitely. Mm -hmm. um, and then I didn't get it for a long time. I was like, wait, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> what are these power-ups? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's weird that when we look back at these things, that we, had, we, we like to think that we had so much fun, but it was a frustrating time in gaming, let's mm -hmm. be honest. It was super frustrating. But how can something be so frustrating and be so good? You know? <laughs> I guess it's just one of those things that we were... I don't know, just programmed to love them, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, mm. nostalgia is super powerful. Because mm. um, there's so many games I've gone back and tried to play, and I'm like, why did I like this again? <laughs> like, it was the weirdest thing. But if it weren't for those games, we would never have tried the stuff that exists now. So, and well, I think... That's true. Indie games prove that games in those styles have a lot of staying power. Like, Fez is really simple. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you really... You could have played that easily on an old um, NES controller. Definitely. <clears throat> Definitely. And not even that, I mean, like, even like some... Some, like, a highly graphical games take, like, uh, inspiration from old games, you know? Mm -hmm. Like... Uh, say Journey, for instance. Like the 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 controller, the the controls are super simple. Look at mm -hmm. the Big Planet. They're, they're super simple. There's only a few buttons that you press, you mm -hmm. know. And they take inspiration from the old style of gaming, where it's just pick it up and play. You don't need like this hefty tutorial to play. Just pick it up and try it out, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the best way of gaming, to be honest with you. It's like. I mean, yeah, there's some like really, you know, unique games where you know you you need to know what you're doing, otherwise it's just not gonna work, you know. Mhm. Mm but yeah, I I personally think that I'm I'm glad for indie developers and their creativity that they bring. You know. Mhm. Mm Me too. And uh, are you? You're an indie developer, right? <laughs> I guess you could say that, but. Mhm. Mm I, um, I would I admit to that carefully mm -hmm. because I only know so much. I know just the basics, um, right, but right. I was able to contribute in two game jams, and I guess that does make me an indie developer. But until I get to a stage where I can like mm -hmm. do it or a huge part of the process on my own, I don't know if I can. Really claim that, you know? Mm, fair enough. Mm hmm. But well, you did help make a game, right? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I did a little bit of code, but okay. I don't know if I would have been able to code all of it from scratch myself. Mm -hmm. And that'll be a test I do as I, I learn more code. Wow. Mm hmm. Well, let me just say hi to Annie, Muchacho, yeah. Hi, guys, how's it going? <laughs> Batman is old! <laughs> Adam West, Batman of the old days. I never watched that actually, so. Well, no. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's hard to watch it with a straight face. And there's so much weird innuendo, especially when Catwoman's on screen. Oh gosh. Um, <laughs> and I was just like, I can't even watch this. <laughs> I wonder if I should go back and watch him with it. <laughs> 
You could. And now it's still in syndication on some channels. Oh, really? Mm hmm. Um, well, I'm not sure if I want to watch it. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. So, have you been watching any good TV shows recently? Actually, yes. Oh, really? Um, The Fall is probably my favorite season for television. In general, I don't really like watching TV because I feel like a lot of it is just a wasteful, a waste of time mm. and energy and attention. Um, and the things we pay attention to are the things that grow. But sometimes all you want to do is sit on the couch and veg out. So um, I uh, I started watching this show that premiered earlier this summer with uh, Halle Berry. It's called Extant, right? Okay. And it's about well, first of all, it's in the future, mm -hmm. and it's about uh, robots and and survival and dealing with extraterrestrial threats and just fighting to stay alive. Um, and it's about family and all this stuff. <laughs> um, so it's really interesting. I like Halle Berry. Um, I don't like her in superhero movies, ever, mm. but I like her in dramatic roles and Gothica because that movie's <laughs> funny. But, um, yeah, uh, and I I have a guilty pleasure called America's Next Top Model. Um. Normally, reality television is not <laughs> my thing. However, one of my good friends from high school um, was a model on it last season and is kind of a, a guest star on it this season. So mm. I felt compelled to watch it to see how he's doing, and he's doing really well with his modeling career. So that's wow. awesome, that's and awesome. I love, I love being like, oh my god, I know that guy. <laughs> I've actually had two friends um, from various schools in my life go on that show. So it's wow. interesting. Mm -hmm. you, know, uh, you know some good-looking people. I'm just saying. I mean, like, <laughs> I'm not even talking about myself here, but. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> But, um, yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Wow. I'm not really into reality TV, not gonna lie. I do like all the Gordon Ramsay stuff, though. Oh, yeah, the food shows. Yeah, food that, shows are great. Yeah, Hell's Kitchen, um, Kitchen Nightmares, and the other one. I don't even know which one it is. But, yeah, I do I do like that. Did you, I mean, like, do you watch it, um, like any actual like TV shows like where it's... Um, such as, like, Sherlock or... Um, Supernatural or anything like that. Oh, coming back this fall, I'm really excited to see what they do with it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, let's see. It's called um, Sleepy Hollow. Oh, Sleepy and Hollow. Okay. Yes. I love it. And uh, I love it because it bridges. First of all, in general, as a rule, I don't like watching anything that is based in American history. I find American mm. history terribly, <laughs> dreadfully boring. And that's because American history, the way it's taught in our country, is, is done in a very exclusive way where unless you are white, wow. a white male, you don't get covered. Your c contribution to this country is not covered at all. And oh, it's like, oh yeah, Native Americans, we were friends. And it's just like, you're leaving out a lot of information, guys. Um, but um, no, so normally I would not approach a show about American history at all mm -hmm. and enjoy it. But they added that supernatural element, and that's kind of what dragged me in. And mm -hmm. also Sleepy Hollow. I used to work out of Sleepy Hollow, so um, I was like, I'm curious to see if they used any sites there that I've been to. And they do. They use the the Tarrytown uh, train station and a bunch of other things that I recognized. Um, in a cemetery I used to pass all the time. And um, it's interesting because I love witty banter in TV shows. Mm. So that's why Supernatural. Um, oh, what's that other show I used to watch all the time? Basically, anything where people are like going back and forth and saying mm. funny things is great. Mm. And then you have this really hot guy with a British accent, and that can't hurt. <laughs> um, I tell you one, one TV show that you would like, knowing what you just said <laughs> Sherlock. <laughs> But is he hot though? Because Sherlock doesn't tend to be hot. It's Benedict Cumberbatch. Okay. I'm gonna look this dude up right now. 
Let's see. And to many people, he is very hot. Benedict um, Cumberbatch. Mm -hmm. Nope. No? Not my style. Not your style, okay. Uh -uh. <laughs> he looks like a Doctor Who. But um yeah, yeah it's it's um it's written by Doctor Who uh, oh. the writer the writer of Doctor Who and he's actually really he is actually really good I never thought I would like it but it's actually a really good show yeah oh. uh, it's got a lot of witty banter in there mm -hmm. yeah well that makes sense and that's the only reason why I tolerated watching uh Robert Downey Jr in Sherlock cuz generally I was just like mm -hmm. But I just like him because he's the king of witty banter in pretty much anything. Pretty much, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> he's he's really good. I, I actually liked him in Tropic Thunder a lot more than I did in, in Iron Man. You know, I haven't seen that yet, and originally oh, I was never going gosh. to see it because I was like, what the hell is he doing <laughs> in blackface? What is he doing? <laughs> but now that I've seen clips of it, mm -hmm. of him taking on this persona, it's just like... It kind of transcends that I'm making fun of you for being black thing. He it's like is a he good puts actor. on a culture. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just amazing how skilled he is at doing that. He is he is really good at that. I'm good man. He's really good. Mm -hmm. Hey black guys, how's it going, bud? That's method acting. Yeah. At its, at its best. It's, it, he is really he's a really good actor and uh, you know, he, I'm I'm sure he's going to get a lot of good roles, you know. Mhm. Mm Speaking of good roles, if they made your favorite game into a movie, what movie would that be, firstly, and who would you cast in it? Well, I have a lot of favorite games, and unfortunately, too many of them <laughs> are not able to be made into movies. So I'll pick one of my favorites that could be a game. And I'm going to say Bioshock. Oh. It is basically a movie in and of itself mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it has all the elements that a movie needs like intrigue and suspense and definitely really cool special effects <laughs> <laughs> so it's sci-fi without being over the top about it mm -hmm. um it the hardest people to cast i feel in games is the main character because you don't see him we don't know mm -hmm. what uh oh, i forget his name but anyway, we Atlas? don't know who the playable character's mm. name is. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. it's like. Mm. There's a photo of him in the game, but it's not clear mm. who he is. Mm. But I just love Andrew Ryan. Oh, he's and cool. If I, he's the main one that I would have the most fun casting. And I could see him being played by a bunch of different people. Um, and even including people who have a knack for funniness mm -hmm. uh, but I could see him being played by uh, what's his name Leonardo DiCaprio maybe because he's yeah. very good at being slightly funny but also really serious and a little bit scary and a little he insane can be. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's um, definitely one of my favorite actors of all time yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio Ma, what you say about Titanic or whatever you know what I mean that might have been his breakout movie but after that he put on so many different he went on to so many different roles he became such an amazing actor seriously such an amazing actor and i definitely think that he's a cool guy you know same with denzel same with you know robert downey jr you know and yeah i mean like for me for my favorite game would probably be the last of us and mm -hmm. i'm not sure who to, who i would cast in that you know i think they did a good job with uh, picking the girl from um, Game of Thrones for Ellie I think they did a really good job of picking her for that because I think she's got that kind of like that edge to her you know but still innocent looking wait which girl um what's her name again is it the short one or the redhead or the short one oh wait Maisie. they're casting it already yeah they're casting it already they've already oh, cast her yeah they cast her as Ellie yeah but what? I, yeah and um, for Joel, I'm not 100% sure who they could pick. I've always said I think Denzel would kill that role as Joel. <laughs> I would. And then uh, everyone would get mad because the, it changes ethnicity. Exactly. I don't <laughs> see why. Even like, if you ever played the game, it, it doesn't really matter what ethnicity he is. You mm. know? It's a great storyline, and I definitely want you to play it sometime, Genesis. One I day really I'll have a PS4! 
<laughs> or I'll steal my mom's PS3. She actually said to me, yeah, you should just take it. You I'm should like, totally mom, take it. It was a Christmas gift. You should totally take it. Say, so it's a Christmas gift, but you're getting more use of it, so you might <laughs> as well keep it. <laughs> and I was like, mom, this is why I don't like buying things for people. <laughs> because they never know what to do with them. They don't love them the way I love them. <laughs> but, um... Oh, wow. Hey, yeah. Eva. So what, what games does she have? I mean, like, would you have to go out and buy these games? Um, she has the Uncharted series. Uh, she loves Uncharted. Definitely one, one to play. Definitely one to play. Mm -hmm. And stream, so... Look forward to that, everyone. <laughs> what? Oh, I From you, right? Stream. No, no. I'm, I'm sure, I, they've seen me play these kind of games, so it's alright. <laughs> oh, well, I, uh... Don't have the PS3. My mom has it, so I'm not uh, likely to stream it. And for some <laughs> reason, she never got to play and tried it three because the disc won't run, and mm. it's a common flaw with that particular game. Really? It just won't run past a certain point. Hmm. And that made me sad. And since then, she hasn't picked up any games for it. <clears throat> By the way, hi Evo. How's it going, bud? <laughs> yeah. So. Hmm. There's a lot of TV shows coming back. The Walking Dead. Oh um, yeah. Game of Thrones is not really fall. It's more winter time because winter is coming. <laughs> 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 and uh, oh, winter springish. Yeah, um, they, they, I'm sure it's next year, right? Hmm? Game, I'm sure Game of Thrones is like next year. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. It's like usually Marchish. Yeah, it was just before we went to PAX last time. So, mm -hmm. who knows when they're going to be taken out this time. Because I'm sure they're almost finished with the book series, so they might slow it down from what I've well, heard. Well, I don't know if they will because it's already starting to go on its own path. Like, the stuff they're changing. I mean, in that way, I'm almost like, okay, I give up reading the books. Hmm. Because um, I'm on the fifth book right now and I can already see so many different changes. Granted, the fifth book is going to be, part of it is going to be covered this season. But um, after that, they're going to be caught up. And George needs to hurry up and finish instead of writing <laughs> volumes that nobody needs. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I do like I, I do like the TV series, but I didn't originally like it. You know, I thought there was way too much sex. <laughs> That's HBO. Yeah, and I was like, you know what? This isn't. I'm not. I'm not liking this. You know, I like watching stuff that I can watch on, like, um, in like, in the store, because I'm so bored. But I don't know. I mean, like for me, I wasn't that into it. But then people kept like pushing me towards it, and I was just like, okay, let's just watch the rest of it. And I actually fell in love with it. So. It's not the first time that's happened, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, like, I, I watch a whole bunch of TV shows like Supernatural and, um, well, yeah, Game of Thrones, Walking Dead. Um, I don't know, I can't really think of any on top of my head, but I mean, I just really recently got into Sherlock. You know, that's mm -hmm. the one I'm really watching right now. The 100 as well, I started watching that. Mm. But. Yeah, it's just uh, whatever comes on, you know, I, I'll, I'll watch, I guess. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, I feel like most of these uh, TV shows are all trying to be, like, post-apocalyptic now. Mm. You know? I don't know. I, f I feel like there's a lot of freedom there when they do it, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because post-apocalyptic or futuristic shows, like, mm. after the apocalypse... Oh, those kind of shows always I'm always drawn to those types of shows um, and I don't know why maybe I have a death wish <laughs> hey music mouse mousey hey bud yeah. um, but it's just interesting to me because most of them have the same theories about how we go down it's either warfare or aliens or or uh, zombies there were zombies a or virus some, or something. <laughs> yeah, supernatural events, mm -hmm. something like that. Um, I think oh, that's CH. a lot. That's where a lot of 
media is going, you know? Mm-hmm. Like movies, TV shows, games. They're all going that route. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure about it to be honest with you. I I really wish someone would just like think of a different genre, you know? That's so we get the sci-fi, we get the we get the post-apocalyptic, we get the zombies and stuff like that, you know. I want I would like something more, you know. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I mean like mm-hmm. I mean like I guess most of the best games and movies and and TV shows, I guess, are post post apocalyptic so they know they're not going to slow down when the going is you know so good right now uh-huh <laughs> yeah maybe I, we're all obsessed with post apocalyptic cuz we're like mm-hmm. looking for a way to wipe the slate clean and just start over mm, definitely there's a lot of us who are like oh this world is screwed <laughs> but, do you, yeah do you play um mostly zombie games and stuff or um I wouldn't say mostly zombie but mostly sci-fi which mm-hmm. to me includes zombies because zombies mm-hmm. are usually the cause of science gone wrong or something like that. So I I consider zombie games part of the sci-fi genre even though it's really taken on a life of its own at this point. But no, I um mm-hmm. I Pretty much every game over there that I have on the 360 is connected to sci-fi in some way. Assassin's Creed. Really? Yeah, like Assassin's Creed, I never would have thought of because it's historical. Mm. But it's also very, very sci-fi. I mean, you look exactly. at a... <laughs> and they also had my girl, uh, what's her name? I keep calling her Veronica Mars, but that's not her <laughs> name. Kristen Bell. Oh, I yeah. like her a lot. Oh, and really? she's she's one of the characters in there, Lucy, and uh, oh, is she? Oh, that's Lucy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I knew I recognized her voice. I didn't know yeah. it was her though. Yeah, they used her yeah. face and her voice. Wow. Um, but I thought that was really cool, and I love the fact that the protagonist is brown, even though you don't get to see or play as him very much. You kind of play as him through his ancestors, who Desmond, aren't. Right? brown somehow but mm. yeah um mm-hmm. yeah and, he didn't uh, look very brown i'm not gonna lie i thought he was white what desmond yeah he was like very to me kind of generic he could go either way mm-hmm. um no muchacho you did not tell me you were in veronica mars that's cool wow I never, I never finished it but it was very popular in campus because girl power <laughs> but, um, yeah. I never really got into it, not gonna lie. Never got into Ver- Veronica Mars. I watched one or two episodes, but never really started from the beginning and finished it or whatever. Yeah, it's another uh, show with a lot of witty banter. Um, <laughs> which is also why I like Borderlands, because sci fi and witty banter. And I'm not someone who likes comedy that much. Mm. Uh, because some comedy I feel like is super mean spirited and it doesn't tell us anything, it doesn't move us forward, it just kind of leaves people where they are and pokes fun at them, like Tasho. Mm-hmm. But some comedy I think tries to dig deeper into the problems and that's the kind of comedy I like, so I like Chris Rock, although it took me forever to recognize that that was what he was doing. <laughs> um, and even Dave Chappelle, I was like, what the hell, why are you in a KKK outfit? And then I thought about it, and I was like, oh, okay, I see what you did there. But the problem with his show was not everybody saw what he did there. They were just laughing at him, not mm-hmm. with him. But, um, yeah, I love Borderlands. Um, I love Destiny, obviously. Um, Castlevania mm-hmm. is an oldie but goodie. I, Supernatural, to me, is part of the sci-fi canon. Mm-hmm. Um did you play so the second Borderlands? Did what? you play the second Borderlands? Yes. What I'm... do you think of Handsome Jack? I think he is one of the most awesome villains of all time. Right? He was so good. He was so <laughs> funny. Oh my goodness, he was super funny. And I think that made the game for me. I mean like Borderlands one was really good as well, don't get me wrong. Uh-huh. But there was something lacking, you know? There was something lacking, and I feel like a real protag- uh, like 
like a, a a villain that you know you you can actually have fun with kind of thing you know it's like you can laugh with him at some point yeah it's But, funny because when i think about borderlands one i loved to me i thought mm -hmm. the gameplay play was a little bit better like i loved the fact that they forced you to try different types of guns mm -hmm. um because each gun was me excuse me each gun was being leveled up mm -hmm. and i love that whereas in the second one there was nothing that compelled me to try weapons that were not suited for my cat my uh class mm -hmm. um but borderlands 2 the writing was overall better and the character development and design better like the first game you don't really get a sense of who the characters are that you're playing until the second game like in the second game it, only then do you know how close um Oh my god, I'm forgetting all their names. You forget <laughs> how close uh, the hunter, what's his name? It starts with uh, an M. Mal no, not Malachi. Why did I say Malachi? Um, uh, oh my god, I can't well. believe I'm forgetting all their names. This is a sad, sad day. <laughs> um, but Hi, anyway, Scarlet. the hunter, the one with the bird. Um, you don't get the sense how much he loves that bird until the second game. Because that was not fleshed oh, out. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, what's his name? See? Now you can't remember. What's his name? What's his name? It does start with an F. <laughs> Stop, Malachi. I feel like it's another biblical name, though. Yes, Mordecai. Mordecai. There you go. That's it. Hi, Rich. Um, How's it going? <laughs> oh, yeah, Mordecai Gaming. was my favorite. How's it going? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was... He... I didn't play him. I we were split screen. I was split screaming. Split screen screaming. <laughs> oh my gosh! What the hell is wrong with me? I was split screening with a, a friend of mine. He used to come to my house and we used to play uh, Bioshock. I mean, no, by Borderlands One. And I was, I was, I love being a commando. Even in the second one, I love being a commando. He that turret and everything. It was just like super amazing. And he was, he was Malachi and. It was um, it was actually fun because it, he his the bird thing is just I think it was OP. <laughs> OP. It was OP. It was, Maybe that's why I liked him. Yeah, I, I think it was really good though. I did, I did like that. the turret was amazing as well. You know, mm -hmm. I had siren's power. I did play as a siren once. I wasn't. I didn't really like. I'm not gonna yeah, lie. I she could run really fast. <laughs> Yeah, I usually go for the female characters, but I was like, the power is boring, and I don't like berserkers ever. Titans, berserkers, whatever, I don't like them. Mm -hmm. um, it's just like I don't want to move around slowly and just be brute forcing things. Mm -hmm. um, and Roland was a good like, he's like Mario, very well rounded. Um, but Mordecai is a, the standout favorite. Even more in the second game because he says stupid things like <laughs> "I never die." And he's like really cocky, and you really didn't get the sense that he was like that in the first game, mm. to me anyway. Who did you play in the second one? Um, in the second one, my first playthrough, I did with. Okay, I don't remember the characters. See, the weird thing about the second <laughs> game, it made me want to play as the original characters more than the characters I was playing with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, it made me remember them more than whoever those characters were. <laughs> But let's hey, see, Barbie. I'm looking them up right now. Um, my, well, let me tell zero. you mine. Oh, you played a Zero, okay. Yes. He was a sniper, well, he was the assassin. Right, and that's why mm -hmm. I chose him, because mm -hmm. I knew I don't usually pick anything that looks kind of robotic, mm -hmm. but I liked the fact that He was stealthy, mm -hmm. and he had a sword. So he had this ability to do far range and short range very easily, and yeah. I really liked that a lot. That's cool. That's I, I, I like that about him too. I was very close to picking him. I obviously went for Axel. <laughs> he was a commander. He had the turret and the turret that you could upgrade to have like rockets and everything. You know, it was, it was cool. I love that. I um. But the thing is, I love the character design for Zero. I loved it. I thought it was really well designed, you know, mm -hmm. personally. I was very close to picking him. 
you know. But I've got to admit, one of the best characters in Borderlands 2 wasn't the one that you could play as, and that was Tiny Tina for me. Oh. I love Tiny Tina. She now, is so funny. <laughs> Tiny Tina is interesting because a lot of people tried to make her into this racist character, and I was like, are you kidding? She just sounds like a random hipster who adopted popular hip hop words, mm -hmm. and that was it. There was nothing racist about that character, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And I was just really shocked that people would say that about her. And I'm like, mm -hmm. come on, guys. Come on. <laughs> not always about that yeah so. that's the thing I, I feel like some people just take it like overboard you know yeah I mean there's, there's there's a difference between someone blatantly trying to do it and there's, there's someone that just you know it's just it's just there to be witty you know mm -hmm. and so we can all laugh at ourselves you know if someone if they made an Indian character on the Simpsons that has a full-on Indian accent and I can <laughs> laugh at it come on now come on that's that's it's there's a difference between races, and then there's, you know, there's funny, you know, there's a fine line, I guess. Hi, Tree Hugger. Yeah. So, what games have you been playing recently? Well, mm -hmm. I almost feel like I haven't been playing anything, but uh, last night I started playing Destiny. Right. Okay. Um, Do you want to tell that... everyone what, how you played it? What? Like, did you play on your Xbox One? Or? Yes! Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and I recently changed my gamer tag, so now I'm Genesis Everywhere. It's not always nice. the same spelling, but it'll it'll do. Because <laughs> you type in the first three letters and you can usually find me. But, um, yeah, uh, I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. There are some things about it, like, it's it's gotten a lot of comparisons to other games, like, some people call it Borderlands plus uh, Halo, and I can see the resemblances. But there's some things like the online all the time thing kind of annoys me because sometimes I'll get booted for no reason. Thankfully, mm -hmm. it hasn't happened any time I was in orbit doing a mission, uh -huh. but it can be very frustrating. But in general, I do like it. It's very polished, but it almost seems too clean. You seem, it seems like you're confined sometimes mm -hmm. like you're in a glass bubble and you can only do xyz you can't attempt to do other things and the interaction with the environment is very limited like you're not opening doors and going through buildings really mm -hmm. you're just walking through a designed maze in a way um and the story is so high level it's it, there's it lacks depth. I don't really care about my character. Oh, and speaking of character, I normally spend hours <laughs> designing my character, and I was just like, wow, there's like no choices here. But yeah, I, I just was shocked by that. Exactly and for something that you're going to be, you know, you're going to be talking to a lot of people. There's going to be a lot of people, you know, in the tower, like. There's a, there's a lot of people. You would have expected that there would be some sort of customization to show that you're unique in some way, mm -hmm. you know. But I f I'm completely agree with you. Like when even when I played the beta, there is only so much that you can do, you know. And I feel like they could have added that, you know, that that just a, a little bit of customization. I mean, you can, if you can have it on Plants vs Zombies, why can't you have like, you know, a high end game like Destiny? Mm -hmm. you know? But to me personally, I mean, I did, uh, I, I did read a few reviews about it, and there were there were mixed reviews about Destiny. You know, it's a lot, f a lot of fun with when you're playing with people, but mm -hmm. when you're playing like alone, like just say you you woke up at that, uh, sometime it, you know, and you're just playing it on your single player, it's it can get very boring very fast, mm -hmm. and the story is apparently non-existent. It's just like, it's just go here shoot things go here shoot things it's just there isn't like you said there's no depth to the storyline and that's one thing right. that i love in gaming the actual narration of the game you don't need to have a complex storyline no you don't need that it's just the way things are done you you know there has to be room for interpretation mm -hmm. you know and i feel like they don't put that in there 
You know, it's like, oh, you save, save the universe or save the world or save the guy. I don't even know, man. I don't even know what the end result of it. But I think the gameplay speaks for itself also uh, in that. Do you feel like this game pl this gameplay is different from Halo enough that it's something new, or do you just feel like it's another chapter of Halo? Well, it's funny because before I picked up Destiny, I was playing Halo 4 for like non-stop. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't feel like it's another chapter of Halo so much as a, in a way, it's kind of a DLC of Halo. Mm -hmm. So it's even smaller than Halo in certain ways. Like, yes, the story in Halo is very small, but I felt like there was a lore and you actually cared about Master Chief mm -hmm. um, and Cortana and no one else. <laughs> But, um, yeah, it's tough balancing game mechanics with, um, storyline. Mm -hmm. And I think all things considered, they did a pretty good job. Um, but I'm looking forward to seeing how they expand mm -hmm. the universe in the next one. Because even though we're going to Venus and Mars and all these big, far places, it still feels like such a tiny world. Mm -hmm. If they could bring the level of like this sense of an endless world that Mass Effect created, or at least I feel it created, mm -hmm. I feel like that'd be great because that game has a serious story and I would love to see more of that brought to an MMO type game. You see with Mass Effect is uh, I actually like the universe. Yeah. You know, I did like the the fact that you can go into the these just such these random planets, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, you know, you can put in drones and stuff like that and get stuff from it or whatever. But yeah, I, I did like that. I like that the worlds were changing, you know, mm -hmm. even though it was kind of a, a I'm going to say it was kind of like a dry environment all the time. Sandboxy. You know? Yeah. But I think they've got they've got room to change that, you know, they've got mm -hmm. room to change. That. And I feel like if Destiny, I don't know what what's going to go on with Destiny. Is there going to be a Destiny 2 or are they going to keep expanding uh, Destiny's world, like, will you be able to go into different planets and stuff like that? If that is so, then I would love to see some different environments, different, you know, aliens and different cultures and all sorts of different things that, you know, would make me want to go ahead and buy it. Saying that, I'm probably going to buy it anyway, but, <laughs> you know, I'm actually contemplating buying it after, so I don't know, like, when I'm going to get it. I'll probably get it today, maybe next week, I don't know, it's whenever I feel like it, I guess. I'm no, I'm in no rush to get it right now. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, how are you enjoying your Xbox One? Um, I like it a lot. I got the version of it without the Kinect, and mm -hmm. you can tell that it was designed with the Kinect in mind. Um, so in a way, I feel kind of like it lacks some of its shine without the Kinect. Mm -hmm. Granted, I don't like yelling at my Xbox to get it to do stuff. Yeah. But um, certain features on a, of of the Kinect are pretty cool. But in the long run, like I really like the interface. I love being able to play and have Smart Glass in my lap mm -hmm. because I hate typing. And actually, Smart Glass was the reason. Like, I have this chat pad on my uh, my old Xbox 360 oh. controller and I didn't even end up needing it because I can just open Smart Glass mm -hmm. and type that way. And it's it's really cool because if, if I have my iPad in my lap and I need to look something up, it's yeah. pretty easy because um, it's already right there. And lovely. Destiny has a companion app. Mm -hmm. So I was switching between Smart Glass and that app. Wow. Uh, yeah, which I thought was really cool. So. At one point, there was this whole thing called the race to the second screen, and TV shows were trying to, especially The Walking Dead, they were trying to involve people more in social media to talk about their shows and promote their shows by using web apps and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really cool that games are experimenting with that too. Um, Watch Dogs also has a companion app, which is actually more of a game than the Destiny one is. The Destiny one is really just the Bungie website um, in a mobile form but uh, wow. it's really cool to see that they're adding that element so that even when you're not playing you still have a way to connect back into the world 
Um, and Halo Waypoint, I think, was the first successful implementation of that. So I think that was really cool. I think the um, yeah, I, I like I like the whole Smart Glass and PlayStation app as well. You know, they mm -hmm. have the same kind of feature where you can you know if someone sends you a message, you can just like easily send it. You know, I've got I got the Xbox One with the Kinect, mm -hmm. and um, I don't use the Kinect very often. But I think if I had it in my living room, I could probably get Just Dance and get my sisters to play. I don't know, I'll play once or once or twice. You know. But yeah, I mean, like for me, there's no, there was no use for it, you know. But I mean, it's it's not a bad, it's not it's not bad. I do like the features on it, and if I had a bigger room, I would probably use it more often, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, like for, I don't mind the Xbox One. Xbox One is pretty. I'm not really that used to it though. Um, I love using my PlayStation Four because it's. I feel like it's a, a lot simpler to use. But the Xbox One isn't a bad system, and I, I I would recommend people to get it. But just maybe not yet. Maybe when more games come out, or if there's a game that you really want. Right. I noticed that you asked about Plants vs Zombies as well, mm -hmm. and that's I I actually really enjoy that game. It's actually a really fun game to play. You know. Is it still tower defense? Um, there is a tower defense mode. Yeah. Oh. But you can play like a. Um, like a, a how you would play a first person shooter like team deathmatch and you know stuff like that mm -hmm. um and there's it's tower defense like if you were uh, there's there is a tower defense mode but and it's really actually really really good and then you can play co-op as well with because i played that with um chicky the other day mm -hmm. for power volunteers and it was actually really fun playing it with her she this was the first time and she even admitted it was actually really fun to play you know so i would well yeah, if if we all get it, we can we can definitely team up and play, and just it's like wave after wave after wave after wave zombies coming at you, you know. So, and it's all depending, it's all random, so you don't know like what what zombies gonna can come next, you know. So, I love that. I, I I actually love it. It's very witty. It's very charming. I I would definitely recommend if you guys are w wanting, you know, a mm -hmm. recommendation. That is a, a good game. I actually, have a lot of fun playing it. It's a quirky shooter, so yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a shooter? Yeah, it's a third person shooter. Okay, I need to go watch some streams of this game because <laughs> I have no idea what it's about anymore. Plants vs. Zombies mo um, Garden Warfare. It is a, it is a shooter. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a third person shooter and yeah, it's Plants vs. Zombies. <laughs> it's, it's always fun, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be picking that up. Mm -hmm. It's not a, a Xbox One exclusive, though, so, right? No, it's you can play on Xbox One, PS4, uh, well, actually, it's on everything now. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's on PC as well, Origin. Well, you and Chicky have it on the One, so I'll probably go mm -hmm. for that because it needs it needs games. It's so lonely. <laughs> it's like, hi, <laughs> you gonna play with me today? <laughs> so, but, uh, uh, what do you have? You only have uh, Destiny right now? Yeah, I only have Destiny, and uh, I've been collecting the the free games with gold even before I had the console. Nice. A lot of people don't know that, but you can download you can basically get those licenses without having the consoles. You just do um, it over the internet, right? Yep. Yep. I did that yeah. with the PlayStation Plus stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I didn't think about doing that with PlayStation, but that would have been smart. But you have to have PlayStation Plus for that though. Right, so I would have been paying into something I wasn't actively yeah, using. Yeah, you weren't using. But uh, yeah. It's it's actually pretty fun, like, and I would definitely recommend if you have if you do get that PS3 of your mom, that you try out PlayStation Plus, because you get a lot of good games from there. You know, mm -hmm. there's a lot. Of, you always get a, a new ga a decent game. You know, every every month. Like I think this last month was Dead Space Three, um, mm -hmm. and b before that was Crisis Three, and then there was like Uncharted and all sorts of different things. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I I would definitely recommend that for anyone that has a PlayStation Three, you know. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. Um, is it like when they have these free games for PlayStation Plus? Is it like Microsoft, where once that month is over, the games disappear, or is it like once you have PlayStation Plus, you can always go back and get those games? Um, you you just have to say that you've downloaded it, and then you can go back at any time and download it again. 
Oh, okay, so you, Plus. you still have to get the license. Yeah, you Boo. still have to get the license. Yeah, but you know what? The amount of games that they actually do give you, you know, it's it's just one of those things. Like, you, I, I have so many games on my PS3. It's, it's not even funny how many games I have. It's just so many. It's just adding to my backlog right now, so... Yeah. Yeah. The first thing I would get in my backlog is the Crash Bandicoot series. Oh, I yeah. love it. Oh, and Jack and Daxter. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's the other one with the robot? Ratchet and Clank. Ratchet and All Clank, of those wow. immediately I would pick up uh, <laughs> if I had the PlayStation. And some of the old school games, if you bought them on the PS3, do they work on the PS4? Is it like how no, does that work? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Oh, um, but I mean, like old games. Like if you pick up mm -mm. Dino Crisis, it would work on your PS Vita, but it wouldn't work on your PS4. It would work on PS3, PS Vita, but it won't work on PS4. Um, I don't know why they did that. I think they, they're trying to sell the PlayStation Now thing, so probably that's why. <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, I heard about the PlayStation Now thing. Yeah, it's yeah. a it's a, it's a it's a it's a concept that needs a lot of work. I'm mm -hmm. not I'm I don't think I'd ever rent a game like that, you know. But I don't know. Some people love love renting games, and now you can do it like off online kind of thing. So meh. I mean, it's kind of weird because I feel like so many games that we have now are it almost might as well be renting because it's dependent on us having other services like even destiny i don't feel like i really own the game because i cannot play it without involving my internet service provider mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that frustrates me i mean i get it it has to work that way because of the type of game it is but more and more games are going that way with always online yep. connectivity Definitely. and that means we don't really own anything anymore especially as things are being forcing us to go digital so. definitely I, I i feel exactly the same i feel like if something were to happen if something was to crash on their end you wouldn't be able to play that game and you resort to playing something else and that's the that's the main thing it's like the the, the actual architecture is so fragile that you know it just takes one mishap and you can't play that game that you really want to play you know Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, I mean, like, personally, <laughs> um, I'm not a huge fan of the whole, uh, whole always online thing, because some people just don't have a good enough connection. If I had stayed on my uh, connection previously, I wouldn't be able to play anything, really, because it was that bad. But, yeah, I mean, like, I don't know what's going on anymore. <laughs> um, so, okay, seems like we're closing out the stream a little bit now. Um, when are you going to stream next? <laughs> and what do you plan on playing? Uh, a lot of people have been asking me that. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm in a weird stage where I'm never really sure when to stream. Because I used to make gaming a very regular part of my life. Like I would go to work and I'd come home and when I needed to de-stress I would pick up the controller and start playing. But now that I have streaming it's become this huge affair like oh my god i gotta turn on my computer oh my god i have to turn on my camera i have to make sure this yeah. works i have to make sure that works i have to make sure people are being nice <laughs> mm. and sometimes it's a little stressful and i'm like i don't know what to play and i'm and i think way too much about entertaining people mm -hmm. and i know it's it's not necessary because I see plenty of streamers that I love watching that are happy and able to be themselves um, without feeling compelled to satisfy the masses. But um, I do want to make a comeback. Of course, I am starting a class soon, so that's going to change things a little bit. Because mm -hmm. I'm going to have homework! Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> so uh, this is Operation Get My Career Back Together. So that comes first, but I do want to start streaming again. Uh, Don't Starve uh, Together is coming out soon. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's basically a DLC for Don't Starve. And I'm really excited. I'll be looking forward to streaming that with some of my 
my viewers. Yay. And um, I'm probably not going to stream uh, Destiny because it's just... <laughs> it's played out right now. <laughs> it's true, but, it's true. But people uh, like watching it, I think. There, there, there are a few, quite a few people that love to watch it and like to find people to play with. Mm -hmm. And Twitch is a good way to do that. And now that you've got an Xbox One, you could easily, like like you said, you have to set everything up on your PC and stuff like that. But now with an Xbox One, you can broadcast straight from your Xbox One if you wanted to. But mm -hmm. that's the catch without the Connect. I have no camera, which means I will lose probably 75% of my viewers because I don't have a camera. Um, I mean, I know there's plenty of people in our community who do very well for themselves without a camera. Mm -hmm. But for me, I know I'm three times more as likely to leave a stream if there's no camera I, I just don't connect wow. with yeah because for me gaming is social mm -hmm. if I don't see your face or hear your voice I'm like what's the point I can go play it myself in silence <laughs> so um, yeah and, and they don't really show interest in the people who are watching so it's like okay I, I don't need to do this you know <laughs> um, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah uh but other than don't starve, mm -hmm. I want to go back and do some achievement runs for certain things. I don't know why I care about achievements, but <laughs> <laughs> I do. Um, I like getting those little trophies when you get all of them. And oh, yeah. Bioshock being one of my favorite games, I was looking to go back and get the last achievement in the first one, which will require me to play the entire game over. Um, it's, it's Brass Balls which you have to play the game hard and you can't use Vita Chambers. Uh, which I okay. <laughs> did do, but there was a glitch in the game that um, made it impossible for you to get that achievement because there was no turn off Vita Chambers option in the menu. It was supposed to be there, but the glitch prevented it from being there and they fixed it. So I want to go back and do that. And I wow. still haven't finished the second one. So um, I want to go and do that as well. Because so you can't get all games to stream, just saying. Yeah, because a lot of people love Bioshock. Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone and their mom has probably played it by now. But oh well, yeah, but people love watching people play that game as yeah. well. And a lot yeah. of people warned me about Infinite and how it has like random racial stuff in it. I'm like, you can't keep me away from that game. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> like, there, I, I there is, but I mean, like, I don't know. I, I, is it's to me like I think is there is obviously there's racial stuff, but it's like the time period that they did that did it in, you know. Mm -hmm. So there's that that's bound to be there. So I mean, like, it's it's not a huge deal. Obviously, racism is a huge deal, but you know, it's like, um, I think they had to put that in just to show like the time that they were living and how different it was. You know, it kind of sets like the atmosphere you know mm -hmm. so yeah I, I feel like they had to put that in there mm -hmm. personally so I don't know it, yeah, I think it's all about the whole atmosphere to that game so I definitely would recommend you play that game though yeah and I fear they're basing it on a very racist time in our history mm -hmm. and I don't think they should like avoid that era Hi, without Skyline. depicting it for what it was yeah mm -hmm. Like, that's just how it was. Mm -hmm. And yes, Infinite is on an alternate timeline, but it's going to be affected by that. And mm -hmm. you got hints of that in the first two Bioshocks. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, and it made sense because it was, what, the 1940s, 50s? 50s, I think, yeah. So, yeah, it's it's very, <laughs> yeah, it's very, it's very, it was a very racist time, and, you know. I I fear that people can't handle it, but that was the reality of it, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. You know, and I feel like that's one way people get to like feel the emotion of that. You know, you feel sorry for these people that are getting abused and stuff, and makes you wanna you know just rage and kill these those that are harming them. You know, <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, it's all about the atmosphere, and I think Bioshock series personally is has the one of the best atmospheres in gaming. You mm -hmm. know, they bring that intensity, they bring that, you know, atmosphere. And I feel, as as Chickamongas would say, that th there was no main character in Bioshock. The, m the main 
character was the was rapture in Bioshock it was the place that you were in the environment that you were in it was so changeable it was so creepy you know and I completely agree with that I completely agree with that <laughs> mm-hmm. so guys please 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 give Genesis Silver here a follow let's get her to stream again <laughs> hopefully <laughs> soon uh, can you post your link for me please Genesis sure um uh, huge shout out to this lady amazing amazing woman make sure you hit the follow button and make sure you yeah make sure you bug her to stream every day you know? <laughs> but yeah thank you for being my first guest on tea time no problem though. I can't wait to see who else you bring on <laughs> Uh, that's going to be a surprise to me as well as them because <laughs> I have no idea yet but we'll figure it out we'll figure it out but thank you all for coming I really 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 appreciate you all and yeah do you have any w- w- last words of wisdom get it <laughs> get it <laughs> um well stay in school <laughs> <laughs> stay in school people get that education (laughs) (laughs) anywho thank you all for coming and I will see you probably in a few minutes because I'm probably going to play a game (laughs) okay guys bye bye